Hi, my name is David Potts and I'm the artist who painted the painting you can see behind me now. In this short video, I'm going to try and explain to you what my inspirations are, uh, how I create a painting like this, and hopefully you'll have a little bit of insight into the creative process. Here's the painting in my studio. You can see it's got the usual paraphernalia, lots of brushes, lots of oil paints, uh, lots of CDs, listening to lots of music as I create these, these paintings. Um, painting itself is a lovely view. Um, as you go up the Langdale Valley, um, you encounter a small valley called Nickledon. You walk up the valley and there's a pass at the end. You walk up the pass uh, up towards Piker Stickle, which is the large mountain you can see on the right, on the left hand side of the painting. And this was the view looking down from about halfway up. So we're not right at the top. Uh, we're not at the bottom. We've gone about halfway up. It's a steep climb. If you've ever done it, you'll you'll know. Uh, but it has a beautiful view down towards the uh, valley. This is Nickledon down towards the valley. Up towards this is Pico Blisco. Um, there. And as we head down the valley, back towards the Langdale Valley. Dungeon Gill and places like that. But above it all, we've got the summit of Piker Stickle. Uh, really uh, a very, very easy to identify summit that. Um, and quite a climb uh, to get up there. I was particularly keen to get this sense of perspective, uh, a depth to the painting. Um, getting depth in a painting is sometimes quite difficult. Um, one way of doing it is to pale the colours down, add some white to the colours, but I didn't want to lose the intensity, the intensity of these distant colours. So I've tried to keep the, those wonderful deep blues um, in those colours, in those distant mountains, but still to breathe sort of air into, into the painting, to put space into the three-dimensional shape. So you see the clouds towards the horizon, I've tried to paint them smaller and smaller, They're getting bigger as we rise up out of the distance there, you can see the clouds themselves are painted much bigger. In the middle of the painting, it's quite undefined, I wanted to leave this middle area um, quite soft and gentle, it's basically screes, uh, rocks falling down the side of the mountain there. But I didn't want to have every inch of this canvas sharply defined. I think canvases like this are better having some areas where it's relatively smooth and soft looking, even though perhaps the actual textures in real life was hard and rocky. I think as a composition, it makes a lot more sense to have some areas that are nice and crisp. Here's some nice crisp areas here, but we, we counterpoise that with some areas that are just softly suggested down there. And the same thing here in this area of the painting, where I was really keen to get this idea of moving grasses. If you'd taken a time-lapse picture of the grasses in this, in, this, in this scene, it would have looked maybe like a river. And I wanted to get that same impression here on my painting. The stream coming down here was a real godsend because it pulls the eye in it really provides a, a compositional feature so that the eye gets led in through this picture plane up towards the top of the valley and then hopefully sweeps up towards the top of the mountain here and maybe out through the sky up at the top. But having the silvery line of the sunlight catching on this mountain back was too good an opportunity to miss so I really made the most of that line coming up there. And then we've got some idea of, a, of scale. These are the, the field boundaries and the uh, trees on the edge of the field. But I just wanted to indicate them with maybe little dots of paint. You can see it's only a dot of paint there. But because that gives it a sense of scale, again, it's pulling the eye through the painting and creating that illusion of depth. So yeah, I was really pleased with this painting. It kind of summarises for me a beautiful day in one of the most beautiful parts of England. And I was very happy with this painting. 
what were you are to? Of course, one of the things I really enjoy in a good oil painting is the sensation and the textures that you can get from really using oil paint quite thickly. And you can see here in some areas here where I've really tried to, to put the paint on and develop a surface to the painting. Um, when I'm painting these paintings, I'll, one of the nice things to do is to just, you know, run your fingers across the little nodules of paint, uh, obviously when it's dry, um, but they're almost a tactile surface, a lot of these paintings. Uh, I think that's important um, in what I do. Uh, I always admire paintings that have a, a real feeling for the paint itself, uh, for the wonderful effects that oil paint can give. Uh, oil paint is a wonderful medium um, and to use it properly I think you've got to use it generously. It is, it's a very generous medium oil paint um, and it really rewards generous application. Um, when you're an artist and maybe you don't have a lot of money there's always a temptation to be quite parsimonious with your paint, to not squeeze out a lot, uh, and maybe to try and ration yourself. Well, that's a false economy. I think the very best paintings, think about Van Gogh and, and, and Titian or Rembrandt or people like that. The very best artists are always generous with their use of paint. They always enjoy paint for paint's sake. Uh, so hopefully uh, that comes across again in this painting. I have a, a, a real thing about horizon lines in paintings. For me in a painting, a lot of the magic happens around the horizon. Sometimes I'll do entire paintings that are just that little piece of, a little strip of, of land that's 30, 40 miles away, 50 miles away on the horizon. And it's there that you get the strongest atmospheric effects. I've tried to do this in this painting. You can see I've put this, this quite, um, it's, it's, this blue here is almost a greeny blue. And I think this was the, the, the distant uh, Morecambe Bay area or something like that on, in, in, uh, in the original view. But I wanted to have a really strong feeling in this landscape of where the horizon line was. So it took me a long time to finish off that part of the painting and it took several attempts as well to really get it right. Oh, I hope I have. Well, there you go. That's uh, my inspirations for painting this painting. Hope you've enjoyed it and um, I hope you enjoy some of the paintings I paint in the future as well. Thank you for watching.